This is Tyler with American Implement in Scott City, Kansas. And today we're going to go over the uh, settings and hookup of a 1775 with a 5E uh, electric drive and IRHD. Okay, now we're back to our main planner page. We've got our vacuum set, we've got our Pro Max 40 selected, and we've got our rate selected. Um, we're gonna go back into here. Uh, it's a quick, easy way to get to our gauge wheels. So we've got our margin, high margin is 100%, our low margin is 50%, and then our target margin is 50 pounds. So that 50 pounds is a recommended setting. Depends on what type of uh, fill conditions you have is where you wanna adjust it. So essentially what we're setting here is that 60 pounds is how much pressure we're putting on that seat trench. So if you're putting 150 pounds of pressure, you're gonna have a hard time closing that trench. It's gonna add more problems. And we'll get back here on the planner in a second and show you what we're talking about and how that affects things. But so we wanna start around 60. Um, if you're on 100% no-till ground, it hasn't been ever worked, you know you might be able to bump it up to 75. Uh, and then that, the system will work. It will hold it at 75 pounds and also keep your depth all the same. Where you're shooting for that inch and a half, it will hold you. So if it hits a sprinkler track or sprayer track or combine track, it's gonna adjust and keep that target margin at 60 pounds on that row with this hydraulic downforce to keep your depth where you need it to be. Also, you got your alarms here for ground contact. You know, if you get below 80% ground contact, it'll start beeping at you, and same with ride quality. So if our ride quality gets way out of hand, that means we need to probably slow down. We're getting a little too fast and it's bouncing that row unit. So anyway, we'll go from here, but we'll click out of here. All right, we're gonna look at this 5E row unit, and right up here is where we got our hydraulic down pressure. This is the brains of the system, and it's got our little hydraulic cylinder here. So each row has this, and each row has a sensor on the gauge wheel arms. So that's what's gonna tell us how much our part margin or how much we're putting down. So when we set that target margin, what we talked about in the cab earlier, what we're setting is how much pressure is gonna be on this gauge wheel. So how much pressure's up on it. So we set, we wanted 60 pounds. Now that's not setting down pressure, that's setting what this is. So if we got in hard ground, like we're in this road right here, this thing's gonna put out 400 pounds just to hit 60, and it still might not hit it, but it will put out as much as it needs to to be able to hit that 60 pounds. So think of it back in the old days as far as how you set planters, you know, as how you used to do it. You'd get out, you'd check it, you'd kick the wheel. If the wheel spun freely, I didn't have enough down pressure, so I had to adjust my down pressure. If I couldn't move it at all, then I had too much and I had to back it off. But if I could move it just a touch, that's probably about right. And you also always, on any of these planters, no matter how smart they are, get out and dig. So we wanna see how it's doing, how it's closing. So make sure that everything's set properly. But if it's putting too much pressure here and we got our margin too much, it's gonna compact that sidewall too much and then these aren't gonna work. And that's why we sell aftermarket ones because everybody thinks that we need to have more, but it could be a problem right here. So make sure that we set this margin correctly and if we set it get out and look at it you know that will make a big difference also will save you wear and tear on these gauge wheel plastic bushings in here and also on your parallel arms so we run it properly it should be set good okay and what causes it when guys put too many that they put too high a pound down force here and it's putting a lot of pressure here what is it showing on your display then that, that they're not looking at that they say need, they need to stop or back off? So usually what they've got there is they think that they're not able to get it in the ground um, or it's hard and they need to bump that pressure up. So they're bumping that target margin over 60. They might have it 125. Um, so what we had last year is we had one that he had that 125 and then he called and said, hey, I'm not closing that slice. He says, I just can't get any pressure. And he was adjusting back here, trying to get that pressure down so he could close it. And then we were switching out, putting uh, different aftermarket wheels to close that trench. He goes, I go, why do you have it set so high? Well, I feel like I have to, to keep it, in the, to get it in the ground. 
So now, so let's back that off. Let's back that. So we backed off went from 125 down to 80. You know, we took stair steps and we just adjusted a few rows. It's like anything. When you adjust the planter, you don't want to adjust the whole thing because there's 24 of them. You adjust a little bit. So we backed that off and we pulled forward and started going in that field. We were still getting our depth. We were hitting our down pressure or our margin. And then all of a sudden it was closing that trench because we weren't put compacted that sidewall so much um, that it was doing it. And it was holding it in the ground. We were still hitting our target. That was what was important. We're gonna hit our target depth. The way this system is designed is if we have our depth set right and we set our margin at 60, it should hold at 60 pounds and it will adjust as much down pressure as it needs to to hit that target margin. So that way that sidewall is not compacted. And so then we don't amplify other issues and not have that trench closed. Because then if we have trench not closing, then we have air pockets and then we don't have a uniform emergence. You know, where this whole concept is to have equal depth across because we want that uniform emergence. Okay, on this 1775 24-row planter, the difference on it is it's got pneumatic downforce and it's not electric drive. But the same concept as far as target hitting our target margin is pretty much the same. Now the difference is, is not every row has a sensor. So we got on a 24 row, we have five sensors across it. So you'll have two on each wing, one in the center section. So you have two over there, one back there, two on this side. So you're gonna have a kind of a picture across that whole planter. Now what happens is this row number three here has got my sensor on it and it lines up on a sprayer track. So now all of a sudden it's gonna read really low on my margin and not hit it because we have an average across the whole planter going, Hey, the rest of them aren't on a square track. So you gotta kinda take some things consideration on it and it will try to work the best, but it's gonna take an average rather than a hydraulic is gonna be each row individual. So this one might not hit its margin. So you might get some alarm saying, hey, this one's low, but the other four could be right on target or be high even. So I uh, think also to look at that. So we might not run as low on our target margin. We might bump that to 75, just depends on your field conditions. You know, if you're conventional and you work everything, yeah, 60 pounds is probably good. But if it's 100% no-till, you need to bump that up to 75 to 90, just to make sure that we're getting our depth across that planter. Because we don't have individual, we're just gonna do an average. So those are a few differences between those. And that's why I like the RHDs, because I got individual control. Um, so that way it can do it.